Okay, who done it? Who changed the calendar in Israel? We can follow Israel into captivity into Babylon, but we do not find them keeping those calendars, but maintaining their own afterwards. In fact, the Babylonian month, Nisan, the first month equated to Abib, basically, um, and uh, replaced on the modern so-called Hebrew calendar in fraud today, uh, is only used in scripture to refer to the reign of kings of Persia after Babylon. And that is appropriate there. It does not, however, change the Bible calendar, nor did it. Taurus sets that as Moses called the first month Abib, not Nisan, which is Babylonian nonsense. And anyone using Nisan really truly is not following the Bible. The Babylonian practice is what they follow. The prophet Ezra is very clear they restored the Bible and its calendar. Yes, the Bible comes with a calendar, folks. It's Sabbaths. That's every seventh day period and feasts, etc., In antiquity, Yahuwah established the first and oldest calendar, really at creation. Yes, it matters to him. He created the timekeeper, the sun. Yeah, the moon and the stars have purposes and functions. Indeed, there's no doubting that. They are for signs and seasons as well. They have their functions. However, the measure, the great sign for days, Sabbaths, weeks, months, years, Sabbaths of years, and jubilees, and even seasons. Well, these start for all of these on the sun as the measure, not the moon. Yes, there are a couple of feasts uh, driven by the moon because they are evening events, but we even prove their timelines out uh, in uh, two videos in our Sabbath series, parts one and two. It's, actually, it's uh, Answers in Sabbath, parts one and two. Uh, one on the unleavening, the seven days of unleavened bread, the other one on the Day of Atonement. Um, so basically, they both identify the day switching at sunrise. Period. Done. Proven. The end. There's really nothing to discuss. And we keep getting uh, messages from people you know, they'll see one video within all of that, and they'll say, oh, but, you know, Leviticus 20, blah, 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 says, and they'll quote the Passover. Well, the Passover is not, <laughs> it doesn't start at the start of the day. It starts in the evening, because that's when Passover started. That's what the Bible says. It was not a, a daytime event. That's just fact. So to take that and say, oh, well, that just redefines the whole of Scripture. What? <laughs> no, it doesn't. See, this is the Bible calendar. Does this matter to Yahuwah? Let's see. Yahuwah cared so much about his calendar, well, he had it engraved on the heavenly tablets, which are still there, by the way, uh, which writing Moses received and wrote Jubilees, and Enoch also reviewed and wrote the book of Enoch. There you go. Uh, 52 weeks in the year, 30, 364 days, uh, and the months are essentially 30 days each. And yes, they're 24-hour days. We will deal with that when we get to Enoch. Uh, there are some out there saying, oh, it's 18 hours. No, 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 no. Enoch is charting the sun and the moon from the east gate to the west gate. You're missing the six hours that are the return, which is a total of 24. So no, that does not ever work either. See, that's engraved on the heavenly tablets, not just some dude who chose a calendar one day, or especially some rabbi who can't get it right anyway. They never do. They're horribly off, and they have to be, by their own doctrine, right? They're not allowed to teach you and I anything. Enoch will agree, you will see, coming soon. If we change the calendar, we disrupt and profane his feasts and Sabbaths. And yes, they are still pertinent. They still matter. Because he never passed away, watched our feast series, where you'll find the feast throughout the New Testament and the Sabbath, throughout the New Testament, and both throughout, even all the way through Revelation. The Revelation hasn't quite happened yet, so how can any illiterate scholar say these have passed away? Of course they haven't. 
They are corrupting every week of every year today, folks, and really every day. Um, But where did all of this come from? First, by observing the moon instead of the sun as the measure. Jubilees, and you are about to see Enoch very soon, coming very soon, uh, rebuke the use of the moon as the measure of the start of the day, etc. The Bible does not use the moon as that measure. Yes, it does serve a purpose, but it is not for the start of the day, the week, the month, the year, the Sabbath of years, the Jubilee, uh, or even the seasons. So, okay, that's a lot. Um, but again, it does have a purpose, of course. Now, we've well proven this, uh, even the word month, uh, inserted in fraud many times, uh, to change the calendar, um, you know, is, is moon instead of month. It should be month, uh, many of those times. And so people looking at it and saying, oh, well, the new moon dry. No, the month does. The new month does, not the new moon. And this is, this is an extensive study that we probably will do a video on at some point. Um, yes, they even change the Bible. Imagine that. Yes, we've caught them many times. The couple of feasts that start in the evening are evening-driven events, not calendar changes, nor could they be, especially when the rest all begin at sunrise. I mean, there are seven feasts, so we're talking two, sort of three, uh, that have an evening start. And then, well, the others all start at sunrise. So how do we overlook, you know, the full picture? Well, that's pretty much what many are trained to do. We're trained to read in fragments. We're trained to pull out this or that and not to see the full view and the full perspective. Moses called this walking as the Gentiles after their error. That's what he said. This group who changed the Bible calendar are Gentiles, not Hebrews, and they don't know the language They don't know the Bible. Uh, In fact, they're not even Hebrews at all. They are the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Yahudim, as the word Jew is fraud and never, uh, can't even be rendered in ancient Hebrew, never should appear in Scripture. But and are not, but do lie. Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. When the Greeks came, they did not force Israel to drop their calendar. Watch who defiled the temple. We can find the exiled temple priests in Qumran, Beth Abar, as we well covered in our original canon series in the introduction of most of our books, continuing their temple practice uh, really since the days of Ezra and the return of the lost tribes. They kept extensive calendars, by the way, there, uh, and they're all based on the sun, 364 days, 12 months, 30-day periods, basically each, with four intercalary days, one day added at the end of each quarter, uh, just as Jubilees and Enoch and really the whole of Scripture have always said. This is not the lunar calendar. It cannot be. Uh, We are told is the Hebrew calendar, which is illiterate. It's off 10 days every year. That's pretty bad. I mean, To be off one day is one thing. The Roman calendar is off a day and a quarter every year. But 10 days is ridiculous. Uh, That's not basically, you know, a Hebrew practice from a people that are not Hebrews. So what would you expect, right? It's certainly not the Bible. They don't represent it. They don't know Yahuwah. They never have. They try to hide his name. They try to hide his doctrine. They don't know him. They don't want to know him. We also find the New Testament, especially Messiah's death and resurrection, prove they continue to keep the Bible calendar. Watch Part 6a through G of our Sabbath series for complete evidence. It does not mean they did not learn the others, but it was not until 165 B.C. that Israel was forced to use a lunar Babylonian calendar when The religious system was changed and replaced. A new one was installed. See, there is no separating the Bible from its calendar. Not the Bible practice from its calendar, no. When you identify this group, you know they are not and do not represent the Bible in the slightest. Yet it is this group who today keeps what is called the Hebrew calendar. 
It ain't Hebrew, folks. It's Babylonian. The imposter replacement Pharisees of the temple and the synagogue worship system, which was all new at that time, turned a blind eye to the Torah calendar of Jubilees in Enoch. They already changed the calendar for Israel at that point, but who did it? Well, the sons of Zadok, the legitimate temple priest, were exiled around 165 BC. By who? By the Pharisees and Hasmoneans. That's who replaced them and became the temple priest and, the, and those basically in charge of the temple, as we see all the way to Messiah's time. They're there. They shouldn't be. They're illegal. They should not be there. Now, this is why the Qumran local writings call them the sons of darkness, the wicked priests, and many other uh, not favorable names. Uh, we have a whole chart in uh, some of our recent books, like Rest the Case for Sabbath, uh, and it is intense, as well as Messiah. He did not have good words to say about these, period. If you do, you don't represent the Bible. Let's just be honest. These Pharisees and Hasmoneans are Gentiles, not Hebrews. They came from Samaria, from Modain, which is in the territory of Dan, not Judea. They were not Hebrews. Again, we proved this out in Psalm 83 war uh, in our Answers in Second Ezra series uh, in Gog of Magog videos. So it, this stuff is, is right there. It's actually not difficult to chart and map and track these folks. They practice the Babylonian lunar calendar, another worship system, not Yahuwah's ever. They attempted to infuse him into theirs, but see, that doesn't work. He always rejects it. The temple priests kept the Bible calendar based on the sun, and so does the New Testament, as we have well proven in our Sabbath series, Part 6a through C, and rest the case for Sabbath, our latest book. Get it if you have not. Uh, if you haven't reviewed that case, then wow, are you in for a real revelation. Joseph of Arimathea in Mark 15, however, though saved, was a prominent Pharisee who, as evening approached, was still on the Pharisee calendar, not observing the feast Sabbath of unleavened bread as of yet. See, he petitioned Herod for the body of Yahusha. He then went out and bought linens, which would be breaking the Sabbath otherwise. Uh, it is something that he wouldn't do. He's a very prominent Pharisee. Uh, if his Sabbath drew on, as the Bible Sabbath still did, according to the Bible, uh, because it started at sunrise, not sunset, then he would have broken his Sabbath. He would not have done that, of course. In Pharisee land, there is a blank period, see, during the day between Passover evening until they begin their false Sabbath at sundown, see, because they change the calendar, they have a half a day unaccounted for, and they also end up extending the seven days of unleavened bread to more than seven. Uh, well, that's kind of dumb when you think about it, yet, you know, we've all fallen for it for many years. This is that gray area of error, which the Pharisee lunar calendar creates, and they would exploit to crucify Messiah on unleavened bread's Sabbath you know, of the first day without appearing to break the feast, yet they did. See, they actually did. They just didn't break their false feast because they celebrate at the wrong time. He was also carrying out the wishes of the Pharisees, Joseph, uh, who demanded Yahushua be in the tomb before sundown, uh, again, for their false Sabbath. They were adamant about that. They were very religious. There's no doubt about that. Righteous? No. Again, Joseph was an exception because he followed Messiah. He was saved by all accounts, uh, very likely. I mean, it certainly appears so. Um, so, basically, their false Sabbath is already in play way back then, which means they're not following the Bible calendar, which we already know the temple priests said they didn't follow the calendar. Now then, the Marys, however, and this proves this, followed the Bible. Notice they observed but did not participate. Why? Ah, this is important. Luke 23, 54 through 56 begins with the exact 
paradigm of Joseph of Arimathea the Pharisee. That is the story here in this portion, thus the context, when he says it was the preparation. Yet, at the same time, Luke says it was the Sabbath, because the Sabbath drew on, meaning it was already in place. Now, how can the Sabbath be drawing on? How can we be in the Sabbath and at the same time it be the day of preparation? The day of preparation is preparing for the Sabbath. Well, it can't be both at the same time. Ah, those two are at odds with each other, not because Luke was wrong. Oh, no. Luke is preserving that there are two calendars at work here. Preparation day is the timing of Pharisees. That's what Joseph is following. Uh, who have this blank period falsely for this feast Sabbath. Yet, the true Bible Sabbath was already drawing on. There you are. It's right there in Scripture. Uh, Since sunrise, which he confirms when he tells us, the Marys watched, noted where the tomb was, and then left, and went back and observed, finished the observance of the Sabbath. They were already celebrating. See? So they're following the Bible. Joseph was not. Yes, he was saved, but he was still following the Pharisee calendar. That is what you see here, and so did the Pharisees. I'll show you in a second. Notice the Bible writers do keep the times pertinent to the people involved many times, and it is appropriate to do so. Just That's why the Babylonian Nisan we showed you in the very beginning is used, but it's in context of the Persian kings. Thus, appropriate. It's their month. It's the Babylonian month, but still, they conquered Babylon at that point, and that's where uh, the Hebrews, uh, some of them still were, uh, especially Ezra, who's writing uh, at that time, and would return later. But it doesn't change the Bible. Same here with the Pharisees, whom Luke is really calling out, if you read this in proper perspective. This is no surprise because the Pharisees had already identified this, again, false blank period that doesn't actually exist, not in the Bible, between Passover evening and the next evening when their false Sabbath would begin, yet actually they were crucifying Messiah on the biblical Sabbath, which started at sunrise. But see, they had already changed the calendar since about 165 B.C. Again, watch our Sabbath series, parts 6a through g, and we vet that fully. Uh, Read rest, the case for Sabbath. It's all there. The temple priests continued the Bible calendar, as does the New Testament, though it notes Pharisee times within, but more so to expose this, and that's exactly what Luke does. The Pharisees controlled the temple and the entire religious system at that point. They had synagogues, right? Well, how come there's no synagogues in the Old Testament? There are not. Because there were none till 165 BC. How come there are no Pharisees mentioned in the Old Testament? Because they were not in Judea until 165 BC. B.C. The party didn't exist in Judea. Oh, it existed in Samaria, where they came from. And if you read 2 Kings 17, originally those Pharisees were the lowest in the land, which are not the poorest, but the criminals. Think about that. So when they turned a blind eye to Torah's calendar, they kept a different one. And this can be observed to this day. Okay, so who done it? The Pharisees, known as rabbis, and the continuation of the Pharisees is rabbinic Judaism, which is never the religion or really relationship of the Bible, because the Bible's not about religion, but rebuked many, many times, especially from the lips of Messiah himself. They are Gentiles, following the Babylonian system of worship they infused in Samaria with Yahuwah. Except they don't call their God Yahuwah. They don't pronounce Yahuwah's name. YHWH disappears from them, from their lips. Why? Because they call their God Hashem, which in 2 Kings 17 is Ashema, same God. He rejected that, and he still does today, and he always will. 
Today we call that Judaism, and it is not the origin of the Bible. Again, watch the origin of the word Jew, uh, and Psalm 83, war, and Gog of Magog, and <laughs> Answers in Second Esther, where we really expose that fully. Um, so, they are the opposite of the Bible practice, period. And again, just read Mark 7, especially verse 9. The so-called Hebrew calendar today is in fact the Babylonian lunar calendar, condemned by Jubilees and Enoch as error. And it is error. It doesn't even work. It, it requires an adjustment uh, of an entire month every so many years. I don't remember how many off the top of my head. And, you know, so they have 13 months in one of the years. That's stupid. That is not scripture ever. There is not a single time that ever occurs uh, biblically. So something they just made up yet again, changing the Bible. Now we follow the Roman calendar as well, of course, but we are told the Bible calendar is based on the moon from the so-called Jews, which is a fraud word that shouldn't exist in scripture, uh, and they supposedly keep the Hebrew calendar. That's a lie. The sun is the measure, and that remains. May we restore it. The temple priest called them out and identified them in 100 B.C. The Greeks nor Romans changed the calendar back then. It is the Pharisees and Hasmoneans, the sons of darkness, the wicked priests, the synagogue of Saint, and the seed of Saint, and mind you, or what we call modern Jews today, who changed the calendar. And they're still abiding by it, not that they don't leaven that too, they leaven everything. And there you have it. We have over 380 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up. We also have uh, alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Utreon, and Odyssey. And our new podcast is also available for all of our videos pretty much uh, as well. Uh, all links are in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative to Facebook, we now have Parlor link below. We now have five books published internationally with number six coming very soon, being read now in over 100 countries. With our new release, uh, Rest, the 400 plus page case for Sabbath. Uh, it's been out for a little over a month now. Uh, we also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon. Uh, many ask for that. It is available in hardcover or softcover over there. Uh, additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with now color maps and interior. Uh, many requested that as well overseas because it was only black and white before. We still have the black and white available for a lower price point. Uh, and we already have color in the Philippines. But that too is available in hardcover or softcover on Amazon overseas if you wish. And the Book of Enoch coming soon. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, now are free in ebook. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.